The cheetah is the rarest big cat species in Africa and its numbers have decreased substantially over the last decades. Central Namibia is the most important stronghold of the population. Here, the cheetahs do not live inside protected areas, but on privately owned land. This has caused conflict with the cattle farmers on whose calves the cheetahs occasionally prey. Viable conservation strategies must therefore be developed to help solving this human-wildlife conflict. In order to find these solutions, the Leibniz IZW started a research program on the spatial ecology of the cheetah in 2002 and established a trustful collaboration with many farmers in Namibia. Supported by the farmers, we caught more than 250 cheetahs and equipped them with high-resolution GPS collars. What we learned about the spatial behavior of the cheetah through this enormous dataset is exciting for two reasons. First, we could observe two distinct spatial tactics of male cheetahs. Some males own territories where they mark at prominent landmarks, but most other males, we call them floaters, do not own a territory but roam over vast areas. Second, the territories are not contiguous but spread evenly across the landscape with a lot of open space between them. Floaters visit these core areas of the territories frequently to check for vacancies. At the same time, the females visit the same areas in search of mating partners. This means the core areas of the territories function as communication hubs for the local cheetah population, resulting in hotspots of cheetah activity. This results in high local depredation risks within the hotspots and in low risks in the other areas. Based on these findings, we designed an experiment together with the farmers. Where they kept breeding herds inside the communication hubs, we moved them to areas with much less cheetah activity. These experiments were successful and we reduced the livestock losses of the farmers by more than 80%. This project proves that the future of the cheetahs does not lie in the hand of scientists and conservationists alone, but it depends on all stakeholders working together on viable solutions.